What's going on everybody, C4 here, welcome back to the channel, and today we are doing another Madden 21 Fantasy Draft Rebuild Challenge. I'm trying to think of ones, at least right now, where we want to start stacking some Super Bowl victories, stacking some successful challenges. That would make it difficult, but not too difficult, don't make it impossible. So today, we're going to be picking from a list of players that you probably could consider underrated, because some of these guys are going to be pretty talented, and some of them are going to be really good in a Madden franchise, but today... Our challenge is to draft players that have not made a Pro Bowl. Now, the Pro Bowl, when I was a kid, when I first started getting the football, the Pro Bowl was like the be-all, end-all. It actually like kind of meant something, and it was more so almost like a publicized All-Pro. But nowadays, it feels like over the last couple of years, with all the honorable mentions and alternate teams and stuff, it's like almost everybody has a Pro Bowl to their name. So the Pro Bowl, you know, doesn't really hold as much value anymore. I feel like the ratings and all that stuff have dropped down. Now it's like I generally only kind of want to see like the mini games and stuff like that versus the actual game. It's always been a glorified exhibition. But just more so to you know make it more difficult, especially for the first 10 rounds, which are the picks that we always start off with in these videos, we're going to severely limit ourselves because we can't pick anyone that has made a Pro Bowl. Also, I'm excluding rookies because rookies technically are ineligible. They've never made the Pro Bowl. But... Uh, I kind of went through and made a quick list, at least of skill position players that have yet to make the Pro Bowl. A lot of second-year players, but there are some guys that have just constantly been snubbed throughout their career that we're going to put them all together on one team and try and win a Super Bowl. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, well, this is one hell of a spin as we get the second overall pick. Mahomes went out the board to pick one. It makes sense to go grab a quarterback because we have the rare luxury of picking this high. So the best quarterback in the NFL in my opinion, for this type of rebuild that does not have a Super Bowl appearance is this man. Kyler Murray, obviously only a second-year player, hasn't had an opportunity to make a Pro Bowl yet, but yeah, if I'm sitting here at pick two and I can't pick, again, maybe that's, there's the challenge within itself. I had the number two overall pick, and I had to go all the way down on the quarterback list to get Kyler Murray, but uh, yeah, hell of a pick, I think. We're going all in on offense. Second round, Josh Jacobs, another second year player that is yet to I'm also gonna try to finish my offense first. So Calvin Ridley, highest rated player that has yet to make a Pro Bowl. That's still available for me. Having a breakout year right now with Atlanta. Hopefully he can get back healthy sooner than later. Use them in our last fantasy draft rebuild. Why not run it again? I was actually kind of hoping I could get DJ Moore of the Carolina Panthers because he has a superstar dev, but he just went scary. Terry just went right before me. So let's say, you know, I didn't want to reuse DK, but did make a Pro Bowl. He is a monster. Let's get it. DK Metcalf is. And then it's probably going to be our final pick on the offensive side of the ball for a while. It's Darren Waller at tight end. I mean, one of the better stories in the NFL. I was surprised. He was an alternate last year. But like I said, rookies and Pro Bowl alternates don't count for the sake of this rebuild. So Darren Waller, welcome to Jacksonville. All right, we're going to start with BPA on the defensive side of the ball. That's grabbing Matt Ioannidis, the defensive tackle of the Washington football team to kind of anchor the center of that defensive line. Now the best player available in the safety category that is yet to make a Pro Bowl, that's still up for grabs, is John Johnson the third of the LA Rams. Big fan of him, loved uh, everything that happened that time. That year the Rams went to the Super Bowl, I was cheering for them because of the things John Johnson was doing. So I appreciate you. Welcome to Jacksonville. With our second to last, I think it's our eighth pick, we're going to get one of the more better young, talented young linebackers in the NFL. And that is Devin Bush. He's young, he's talented, he's young, and he's better, and he's young. And he's 55 overall. And by that, I mean, that's his jersey. What? What am I doing here? We're going to continue building this linebacking core. We're going to get a partner next to Devin Bush. And in the ninth round, with our second to last pick for this little part of the video, we're going to get Shaq Thompson. Learned a thing or two, hopefully from Luke Keekley, he can come and help lead this Jags defense. Well, because no one probably wants to see offensive line picks, I'm going to pick a guy I'm a huge fan of. A guy I was a massive fan of during the draft process. And just, I kind of want to play for him. That's almost maybe more so the sake that I'm drafting him versus he's actually the next guy that we should be drafting. But for our 10th selection, I'm going to bring in Darnell Savage, the young safety from the Green Bay Packers, to play back there with John Johnson. And hopefully be able to compensate for what is probably going to be a little bit of a lackluster secondary. But there we go. Those are our first 10 picks of players that have not made a Pro Bowl yet in their career. I'll finish out the rest of the roster. Uh, for I'm going to try my best. 100% all the starters will not make the Pro Bowl. There could be guys that made it a special team or something that I might miss. But let's finish out this roster. Let's meet the team and get into year one. 
So the draft has completed. Let's meet our team. So we're at 82 overall. As you can see, a little bit heavier on the offensive side of the ball. We're going to be one of the best offenses in the league, 88 overall. With a 77 defense, you know, we got to maybe a little too short-sighted by burning all of our good picks on the offensive side of the ball. The defense is a little bit lacking. Let's meet the offense. So we have Kyler Murray, Josh Jacobs, Calvin Ridley, DK Metcalf, Darren Waller. All picks that you saw. We filled in. Uh, we got uh, Andre Dillard, the Eagles, first-round draft pick in 2019 here at left tackle. We got Ali Marpet, Matt Paradis, Wyatt Teller. And then I only had to – I don't want to switch players around because I feel like the challenge is just like, you know, I want to, you know, have to draft players at the respective position because then it kind of gives you a thinner pool versus just saying drafting any lineman and shifting them. But I forgot that I had a guard, so I double-drafted guard early. So – uh, we'll, we'll pull a little bit of mulligan here. Plus, Elton Jenkins played tackle. He played everywhere at Mississippi State, but he actually is a natural tackle as well. So we're going to slide him out to right tackle. Uh, we also finish up the wide receiver room by bringing in McCole Hardman of the Kansas City Chiefs and Brashad Perriman of the New York Jets. Backup running back. Maybe giving him a second chance, Darius Geis. Maybe he learned his lesson. Or are we just going to all agree that we're just going to Ray Rice him again? I don't know. Whatever's up. I mean, he's kind of a piece of shit. So... Let's let everyone else decide. Now the defense. What needs work? So you saw the Shaq Thompson, the Devin Bush, the Darnell Savage, and the John Johnson selections, as well as Ioannidis. So to fill that in, the rest of the roster, we got Cody Barton of the Seattle Seahawks. We got Trayvon Mullen, Greedy Williams, Darius Phillips, and uh, I don't know, Tremont. I think he, Tremont Williams got to have a Pro Bowl. This was just the, uh, the AI. He didn't make the Pro Bowl. We got to cut his ass. His ass is getting cut. Uh, so we'll get rid of him. The rest of the defense, we got Josh Sweat, Kalen Saunders of the Kansas City Chiefs, and a second, uh, what was he, what was he, it wasn't the second pick, but he was very, very high. Has not lived up to his billing. Now, yeah, he was the second pick uh, a couple years ago for the Raiders here in Mr. Cleveland Farrell. Uh, so let's get rid of Traymon Williams because he's the only pro bowler on our roster. Sorry, bud. Got to go find, I mean, 37. Go get a job at Best Buy and deliver my Xbox on time. Um, hopefully the defense develops. Offensively, should be able to carry us. Should be able to drop 30, 40 points on every single team. Let's get into it. I think, I think we have a winner here. We have a winning team. A winning formula. Let's just go execute. So then year one didn't quite go as good as I thought would be. I want to see what we are offensively. 7-9. That's not a bad record. That's kind of almost like a standard record of a solid team in Madden. A solid underperforming team, that is. Uh, statistically, let's see what we did. Well, we were the third offense, so that lived up to the billing. The 88 overall. Defensively, yeah, pretty bad. Pretty bad. Kyler Murray was good. 4,000 yards, 35 touchdowns to 12 picks. 13, almost 1,400 yards. 8 rushing touchdowns for Jacobs. 8 for Darius Geis. Uh, 3 for Kyler Murray. Receiving DK Metcalf continues just to be absolutely insane in the Madden 21 sim. 78 catches, 1,200 yards, 13 touchdowns. 8-2 and two for Darren Waller. 8-9 and nine for McCole Hardman. 6-7 and seven for really. That's actually a little bit disappointing, given that he was one of our higher draft picks. We drafted him actually ahead of DK Metcalf. Defensively, Devin Bush on the team, over 100 tackles. Same goes for Shaq Thompson. That's, I mean, that was just two uber athletes at the linebacker spot here. 10 sacks for Matt Ionice, 17 TFL. So, I mean, maybe when we drafted him, we could have raised a couple of eyebrows. Like, why are you drafting Ionice? That, well, he played well. He played very well. Uh, Pharrell still struggling to uh, make the most of his NFL career, but hopefully we can get there. Three interceptions. John Johnson, the third leading the team. To fix their greedy two for Shaq Thompson. Quick look at the yearly awards MVP. Went to Tom Brady, who's on the Jets. Okay, Kyler Murray coming in number six. Of its play that you went to Matt Ryan. Kyler Murray at number four. If it's play that you went to Tremaine Edmonds. Offensive rookie of the year went to Tua. Defensive rookie of the year went to Kenneth Murray. We couldn't draft any of these guys, anyways. Uh, Kyler coming in at number seven for the best quarterback, best running back, Josh Jacobs at three. Ayuk beats out DK Metcalf for the number one wide receiver in the NFL. That kind of stings. I was hoping we could get a dev trait upgrade there for DK. Uh, nothing else there in the rest of the words. Jesus, looks like the AFC East is dominant yet again. So let's just quickly get into the offseason and get back into year two. Now, usually I don't spend money in free agency, but I just took a peek here, and uh, there's actually an upgrade at corner to be had. I don't think he's made a Pro Bowl either. That's Tavon Young. Struggled with some injuries, but when he's on the field, he's pretty damn good for the Baltimore Ravens. Only 27, has that star dev, so we're not going to overpay, but if we can bring him in, steal him away from football team, it's a great addition to our secondary. And we're able to seal the deal. Welcome to Jacksonville, Tavon Young. Really? That name in 2020? Really? 
didn't mean to pick him, but I picked him. So, let's live with it. Let's just live with it. Let's just live with it and move on. Live with it and move on. All right, well, we had two first-round picks. And again, you don't really address these picks. But when you get something like this at a position that we absolutely didn't need, um, I guess we get some good... We, we got some karma because we kind of jumped on the grenade of a guy named Corona. And then we also have a bad guy that we don't really want to employ in Darius Geis. So we can move on from Darius Geis. And Cole Gregory can be RB2 to Josh Jacobs. He looks outstanding. It's like actually one of the better players we've ever drafted. All right, so meet the rest of our draft class here after botching the first pick and uh, clicking in and clicking out of my Madden screen on PC just made the selection. Uh, I think we feel, uh, you know, pretty well. We got absolutely two positions that we do not need. We straight up drafted the same way we drafted in our fancy draft by going QB running back. But it is what it is. But truth be told, truth be told, uh, everyone outside for the third and fourth round here, Bruce at tight end, Poyer at corner, Winslow at linebacker. Those were like literally the only three players that I had worth a damn drafting at kind of position to need. I understand that you need two tight ends so Bruce can come in and be a backup behind Darren Waller. We got Poy here at corner 71 out of Washington. Scheme fit. And a nice little linebacker here. Run stuffer out of Kentucky. Uh, I let the computer just sim these ones out because literally I, I tear. This was a terrible draft. There was not a guy really beyond day two that was worth drafting. And hey, oh, he didn't have. Hidden dev on Schaefer, that's, that's all right. But yeah, nah, it's, a, it's a garbage draft. Let's just move on from it. We got a guy named Corona. That's fine. All right, let's look at a roster. Year two, 86 overall, that 88 offense. It's now a 91 offense. We have a dev trade given to DK Metcalf. He's now chilling on that superstar uh, with Geis here now. Let's be honest. Let's get some positive PR after the blunder in the draft. We got rid of a uh, probably, I don't know, shouldn't probably have a job in the NFL right now. Uh, that's it for dev trades on the offense. And defensively, we had Ioannidis went from star to a superstar. Thompson went from star to a superstar. John Johnson went from a star to a superstar. And we were able to bring in Tavon Young, which, uh, you know, that looks pretty good. Also, Barton went up a dev trade. I don't know why he's not starting right outside linebacker for us, but we're going to make sure he is. And that's what we need, man. We need better performance from our defense. We can't be 30th overall in the league defensively and expect our offense that should still operate like a top five offense to carry the team yet again here in year two. Let's get some complimentary football going on. So at the end of year two, eh, better. Nine and seven. We're going in the right direction. Only a game behind winning the AFC South. Just, you know, again, I feel like it's it's a little bit of the same. Our offense was pretty good. Defensively, not so hot. So offensively, 14th, which is, you know, eh, man, a place to be. Defensively, 20. So we're just like a middle of the park team. Looking at the offense, Kyler Murray played pretty well. 3,700 yards, 33 touchdowns, 6 picks. That touchdown interception ratio looks good. Josh Jacobs, consistent. Really, really good. A lot of touchdowns on the ground. DK, he's incredible, man. He is simply incredible in Madden 21, as he kind of should be. He is like, a, you know, the, he's the personification of cheese at a wide receiver spot in Madden. And he's that in real life. Uh, lead the team, 88 catches, 1,000 yards, 12 touchdowns. We got 1,012 from McCole Harbin, 7-3 Darren Waller. Again, Calvin really kind of sh shit in the bed here. Back-to-back -back years. Over 100 tackles here for Shaq Thompson, 5 sacks, 2 picks. 11 sacks, Ioannidis, who's been unbelievable for our team. He should be an X-factor, honestly. Numbers like that. Oh, oh, sorry. His name is actually Aaron Donald, apparently. We also had a little bit of uptick in interception numbers. 5 picks, Darnell Savage, 4 for John Johnson. Which I like to see. Like, this team is slowly trending in the right direction. Uh, yearly awards MVP went to Tom Brady yet again. Kyler Murray coming in at number nine. Let's just see if we have any award winners. We had Cole Gregory, our backup running back there, as, uh, you know, offensive player. Hey, maybe, what's, I don't know what his depth trade is. Maybe we'll take a peek. It was unlocked. Was it? Unlocked. Oh, star, right? I feel like I would have seen the gold there. It is star. But hey, still a nice player. All said and done. We won't botch the draft as bad as we did last time. And we should have a better offseason. All right, quick draft recap. Much better draft this time around. Still not really getting players in positions that we need. But we got the number two player and true talent here in Sherrod Coleman out of Washington State. Not necessarily a scheme fit, but hell of an edge rusher. Should add some competition there with Gleden Farrell and Josh Sweat. We got a 72 corner here, Thomas. We got a 70 linebacker. And I was like, this guy here's picture wasn't loading. There was no way I wasn't picking him. Alexander Davis, the D tackle of Memphis. And he's just 73 hidden dev. 
So I'll, I'm just going to say maybe that's something. This is something that I have seen happen. Not, I'd probably say like one in three, one in four fantasy, or not fantasy draft, but one in four uh, Madden generated drafts. There will be a guy that doesn't have a picture there. Maybe that means they have a hidden dev trait. I don't know. This is a very small sample size, but look into it. But happy with that, man. First four picks, all home runs. So the midway point of year three, now it's where we actually start to need to look at how we're going to build our roster in terms of contracts. We're good, man. This is a juggernaut. And four and four. I mean, it's not, it's not the right home, but we're still totally in it. We are still definitely in it. We got a chance. So you're saying there's a chance. Looking at our team here, our squad, Trayvon Mullen, young player, only 24, 84. Absolutely want to keep him. I think Tavon Young, another player that was kind of a bargain when we got him. So we'll see if we take a two-year deal. He wants a little bit more money. Yeah. See if we can keep our special teams together for the remainder of the rebuild. Give both these guys three-year offers. Gillian has the dev trait for the brand. Wants more money for the brand. Uh, going to the defense, I think Josh Sweat. I'd rather Josh Sweat than uh, Cleveland Farrell long-term because we have that, the other guy that we just drafted. I think that's a little bit better for our team. Greedy Williams. Can we just solidify our secondary here? Okay, he wants more money. What about Andre Dillard? We gave you a chance to, to turn your career around here, and you want more money. Kiss my ass. Cody Barton with the superstar def. Come on. Jeez. Okay, we don't need Phil. We don't need to offer every corner. So um, I guess our a lot of our guys on our team, are they got full heads. They got bad agents. I don't know, but we'll try and pre-sign all of them. But even though I shouldn't. Even though I shouldn't, because they're giving me the middle finger to the contract offer, I should give them the middle finger while being a part of this fantastic organization. There we go. Getting results. Year three, made the playoffs. Nine and seven. We've got the nine seven Jets. Just have MVP on the fucking team. Um, all right. Well, we won the division. Only took us three years. This team of not one player making a Pro Bowl. And it's, uh, I mean, they're, they're, st they're stunting. I believe that's what the kids call it today. They're stunting on the rest of the league. 300 yards, 35 touchdowns, 10 picks for Kyler Murray. Josh Jacobs, dominant. 1,400 yards, 12 touchdowns. Ooh. Maybe someone in the league figured out to cover DK Metcalf. Almost 1,000. No 1,000 yard receiver, but almost 1,000 for Hartman. 10 touchdowns, 8 and 4 DK, 8 and 8. Waller, 7 and 6. Calvin Ridley. And on the defensive side, over 100 tackles. Thompson, Bush, and Tavon Young. I know he's still playing very well. A little bit of a dip in production for him. Interceptions, 3 for Johnson, 3 for Mullen. Seventh offense, so top 10 offense in the NFL. Defensively, we are 28. That is not great. Tom Brady, I think that's his third MVP. Great to know we're going up against that. Uh, rest of the awards, let's see. Any Jacksonville Jaguars here? Nope. Okay, well, we made the playoffs. That's all that matters. I think Kyler Murray is going to show the rest of the league that he's probably the best player in the goddamn face of the earth. And he's going to lead us to the Super Bowl here in year three. And it starts... By hosting and defeating Tom Brady and the New York Jets. Alrighty. Uh, how good's Tom Brady in the sim? Well, we're about to find out. Play the moment sim, I feel, is like a completely different algorithm than what happens behind the hood when you're just simming in franchise mode. And the Jags get off to a hot start. 7 nothing, And Tom Brady. Who well, I'm not pretty sure, unless I'm just by shoot, you know, a little losing a little my memory a little bit. I'm pretty sure he's won the MVP all three years so far. So yeah, Brady's still pretty good at 50 years old. I would hope that our defense can handle them. But again, we have the 28th ranked defense. So if they do fall a little bit short, it's, I can't say that it's unexpected. But we have a seven-point lead here. A chance to kill the game off, which we do. And in our first playoff game, we go 1-0. 24-17. Strong performance, Kyler Murray. 70% completion percentage. Over 100 yards for Josh Jacobs. DK was kept quiet there. Two catches, 14 yards. But the Jags are moving on to the AFC Divisional Round. End of the division round, we got the 10 and 6 Chiefs in a snow game. So, yeah, always, if you're betting out there, make sure that you always take the Florida team in the snow, right? Yeah. But we get the first score of 3 zip, and our 28th ranked defense, stunting, right? That's what the kids say. People say that. But they play well. 10 to 3 into the second half. Kyler Murray, come on. Like, this is, you know, he already puts guys on skates when there's no snow. So I think out in open field with snow, as long as he can keep his track, so he's going to be impossible to tackle, which looks to be the case, even though we peaked in the first half. We absolutely peaked in the first half, but still able to go down swinging. Get a touchdown there. 29 seconds. 29 seconds. Can I do this? 
Oh my god. I get it. We get a lot of snow games. Is it how come there's always a white team? Uh, it's hard to see. DK! No! Go! Oh! <laughs> uh, it's beautiful! It's beautiful. Even my old ass eyes can see him wide ass open. You put press man coverage on DK Metcalf on the last snap of the game and you expect to win? Absolutely not. The Jags roll. The Jags roll. And we're going to the AFC Championship game. Well, let's take a gander here. Now that we're in the big boy games, let's see what we're going up against. The 8-8 eight eight Houston Texans. Okay, they got Saquon and Julio, Byron Jones, Davenport, and Hassan Riddick. So they got a great mix of offense and a defensive talent. And their superstars are legitimate bona fide superstars. But as you can see, oh my God, we had some dev traits. We had some dev traits. Look at this. Forgot. We got uh, nothing on offense. But on the defensive side, Ioannidis is now an X-Factor. John Johnson is now an X-Factor. We saw Barton with the superstar dev. Good luck stopping this. And wait till we figure out what this monster's dev trade is. We're building something here. All right, Super Bowl on the line. Can we find a way to stop Saquon Barkley and Julio Jones? Can they find a way to stop Kyler Murray? Who is going to impose their will on whom? And we start off 7-zip, get the first touchdown of the game. Give up a field goal there to Houston, which is good. Bend but not break. Houston's able to go down after a couple three and outs from Jacksonville. They got three straight scores. We're able to get a touchdown there to uh, give us a chance. Oh, that's not looking great. Not what we're looking for. Can we get a touchdown here? Go to 21. We're down three. And uh, we're getting some stops. Turnover there. 28-24. Four-point lead in the fourth quarter. We're just going up and down the field. We just need a defensive stop here. Hold no field goal. Ah, oh, we can't find it. This is goddamn efficient. We kick the field goal. Tied up at 38. Defense with all the new X factors. Get a stop. Oh my god. 32 seconds. 32 seconds. Can I just shut my eyes and go DK? Dare we? Ah, it's off. It's not what we're looking for. He's in the slot. <sighs> Catch it. Oh, damn it. Full hybrid. We got four touchdowns, two picks here for Kyler Murray. Not exactly what we're looking for. In a fucking chuck it scenario here. DK at the top. DK at the top. Get separation on Shaq Griffin. Oh, uh, you know what was going on. You know what was going to happen. And we, with an extra point, have found a way to force this to overtime. Come on, make the kick. Go to overtime. And lose in overtime. Back to the drawing board. Look at the free agency here, man. Absolute nothing in terms of upgrades. So let's just let's just get right to the draft. So look at our second to last draft of this rebuild. I, I pretty much just set the board, let the computer do its damn thing. It's not so great. But the first couple of picks were fine. We got Brian Hearns, well, not Brian Burns, but Brian Hearns from Florida State. <laughs> it's like a Chinese version. But uh, he looks pretty damn good. 75 normal. In the second round here, we got a 73 D tackle, Virgil Snee. We got another D tackle in Wesley, building up our depth there. And the rest of the draft was just kind of, yeah. Meh. All right, the most expensive point at any of our fancy draft rebuilds. Year four, because that's when our big contracts start kind of coming up here. So let's see. First up, we got Matt Ioannidis, who I guarantee, when I drafted him, people were like, you know, I guarantee most of you went, Ioannidis. And he's been a monster. We got John Johnson with a four-year. Sure. Alan Moore, Pat. I mean, these are, again, these are going to be guys making decisions. We want them to be here for the final year of this rebuild in case it goes to year five. Or do we think there's going to be a better upgrade in free agency? And I'm going to say for 90% of these people, it's probably not. We need to start offering them, I think, bigger contracts. So we lessen our cap it so we can re-sign everybody. Uh, Shaq Thompson. I'm trying to like shorten these videos when I can. So eliminating a little bit of the team preview before every single season gets a little redundant. Shaq Thompson was the only new dev trade player uh, going up to a superstar, which is awesome. Again, another guy that we kind of maybe took a gamble on. Maybe a lot of people thought I should have drafted him when I did, but we did it and it kind of worked out fairly well for us. So we got Devin Bush locked up. Uh, we can probably move on from Farrell. So really we got contracts that we need to establish and hammer out with Savage Jack Thompson, Mikkel Hardman, and that's it. So that's a lot of money that we're throwing around. Might not have a lot for free agency, but then again, I've, I find personally in these fantasy drafts, free agency is pretty garbage.
And in your four, back in the playoffs, 10 and 6, first place in the AFC South. Very quick look at the stats here. What, what happened? 4,400 yards, 32 touchdowns for Kyler Murray. Josh Jacobs continues to be a monster as he is now a 99 overall. Receiving DK back to where we need him to be, 1700, or 1,100 yards, 8 touchdowns, 11 and 8 for McCole Hardman, who we did hammer out a contract extension, 9 and 8 for Darren Waller. Really, all of our skill position players, for the most part, outside of Calvin really have been very, very good. Defensively, 126 tackles for Devin Bush. We got eight sacks, Ioannidis. Uh, the sacks are probably a little bit low. I thought at this point we'd be more consistent. Same with interceptions, three from uh, Thompson. They're leading the team. First offense, we're the number one offense. Able to just do whatever we want. Top, almost a top 10 defense. Yearly Ward, Scott Peck won the MVP. Whoever that is, uh, Kyler coming in at number seven. Let's just see any jacks. All right, carrying on, moving on. We got the wild card. Let's go. Man, if I like the last, every time I'm recording these nowadays, if I record like after supper, I always get a song in my head. Last time I recorded, I remember I was talking about what is love, babe, I'm Hadaway. Now I got Master of Publishing on Metallica. That's just my musical taste. It's all over the spectrum. My musical tastes are all over the spectrum, okay? It's 2020. Respect my decisions. I can't respect how slow our number one offense has started this game. Down seven. Love them to be able to finish this out. There we go. Tied up seven apiece. Defense falls flat. I'm getting ready to hop in with DK Metcalf. If things start getting a little shenanigan -y. Like right here. Oh, big bang, boom. Two quick touchdowns, I think, for the Browns. Fourth down. Oh, okay. Fourth and 15, huh? Let's go four verts. Ah, shit. All right. They're not giving us the press look that we want, but their star guy is trying to shut down Ridley. Fine. Because we can go Hardman or DK. Or I can scramble because we have crazy abilities. Can we make this guy miss? Bloop! Dive! Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray, baby! Scramble quarterback. I haven't got to play consistently with scrambling quarterback since Michael Vick was a member of the Philadelphia Eagles, so I like it. Far too many three and outs from our offense. Hail the tape. Is this clock a running clock? Is it going to be over? No? Uh, yeah, far too many three and outs. Number one offense in the NFL, I guarantee. Look, press man on DK. Uh, eyes closed. Eyes closed! You give me press man on the press man world beater. And a quarterback, that's an X factor. I'm going to hit that every time. But unfortunately, the computer did not help us out. Dak Prescott outdueled Kyler Murray, and we're going to have to go to year five. Then for the final free agency period, I was like, all right, let's go. Let's just look. At our depth chart, and the first player that's an upgrade over anyone, we will sign him. Or even if it's close. And I was like, all right, no upgrades. Oh, there we go, 83. And it's the guy we let walk. So I don't really see anyone that's going to, you know, present a, a massive upgrade. Like I said, we got a six-point upgrade at center. I'm not worried about it. So we'll just keep our money. All right, very, very quickly, looking at our final draft. It's the final draft. Doesn't really matter. We, we want to get a little bit better, maybe in the O-line, interior center spot. Uh, well, I got two solid players, but that's about it. And the rest of the draft was just pretty much backups and depth chart and special teams players. All righty, so this is it. This is our final squad. Putting pen to paper, this is what we got. After starting with the challenge of no player who has made a Pro Bowl would see or step foot in our locker room. Here's our team of players that did not make the Pro Bowl from our draft. We're very good at 92 overall. Uh, Kyler's a 93. Josh Jacobs, 99. DK, 99. Calvin Ridley's a 91. McCole Hardman is a 91. On the offensive line, we have Darren... Well, Darren Waller's on the old line, but he's a 90. Elkin Jenkins, 90. Wyatt Teller's 89. Ali Marpet is a 90. And Andre Dillard's up to an 81. On the defensive side, well, we got our X-Factors. John Johnson, Shaq Thompson, Cody Barton, and Matt Ioannidis. We still got this guy. Still doesn't want to have a picture. Fine. Uh, Darnell Savage up to an 87. 86 for Devin Bush. 86 for Trayvon Mullen. 82 for Greedy Williams. So, I mean, we've had a lot of development, and we've kind of locked out a little bit in this rebuild with our dev traits, which is good. But at the end of the day, it's all about stacking Super Bowl victories, and let's see if we can do it here in year five. All right, we're just doing it live. I was 5-3 and three when I last saw it. I decided to sim. Why? Why didn't we make the playoffs? Why? We were 5-3 and three and we finished 8-8. Eight and eight. 
94 overall team. One of the best teams. Easily the highest overall team that we've had in any of these fantasy reels that we didn't even make the playoffs. It was like we made the playoffs like the last three years. Well, if you make a team of Pro Bowlers, you yeah, apparently just aren't going to win the Super Bowl. Kyler Murray actually, that's a step back, regressed a little bit. Josh Jacobs was a beast. I mean, DK Metcalf was held in check this year. Um, you know, I nice man. I, shout out to him. He's probably been like the star. Because again, I guarantee people are like, ah, Matt Ioannidis. And look what he's done, man. 10 and a half, 11, 18. He ate, man. He's absolutely feasted. Got five picks there from Bush, Devin Bush, middle linebacker. We have the number one offense in the NFL. And it's just that damn defense, man. 25th ranked. When a 91 overall defense is the 25th worst defense, you got problems. Well, we just won our last one. Hey, you know, we were due. We were due to have a stinker. But, I don't know. I feel I feel like this was a little too harsh. This was a little too harsh for the team that we have built and developed and grown and drafted. But, I don't know. I guess that's how it ends. So, guys, keep on keeping on leaving suggestions and ideas for the next Fantasy Draft Rebuilds. Every time you get a good one, it makes the list, baby. So, give me a good idea. And you might make the list. But that does it for me today, guys. Thank you for watching. As always, first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button, smash the like button if you enjoyed how the videos out in the old YouTube algorithm. And until next time, it's C4. Say peace.